Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Wes. Glory to God. Okay, so... Hallelujah. Okay, y'all. Well, it's time to give our offering. Uh, and... Um, we'll, envelopes maybe in the front of you. Or if there's a code on the envelope you can use. Or you can go to blackchurch.com right and give. So, um, again, I'll, like we did before with declarations, I want you all to stand if you're able, uh, and I want you just to believe with your whole heart. I want you to believe with your whole heart, and I want you to see what you see up here on the screen, uh, and just declare it, repeat it, and I mean, speak it as we kind of speak it together, and let it just, and just let it penetrate your heart, okay? Dear Father God, you are my source, unlimited, unfailing. Because of you, I don't lack for any good thing. Thank you for blessing us and our children and making us a big blessing to a lot of people. Your glory. Now, as you continue on with these declarations, I just want you to, if, if, you, if, you, if you're giving on uh, your phone, lift your phone up. If you're giving in an envelope, lift your envelope. If you're giving in your heart, <laughs> lift your hands up, okay? And continue to declare, we are getting our houses our buildings, our lands, our vehicles, and our equipment. All of our debts are being reduced and eliminated. The Lord is bringing into our hands seed, even some great big whopper chunk seed. Ah, oh, amen. Okay. Uh, so one thing I want to say before you can go, uh, before I go... Um, into this is that like we say those declarations often and sometimes it's easy with declarations just to be like reading and it's uh, it's going on and on okay uh but i just want to tell you there's uh, like a real life uh perspective on it like how we say we're getting our, our 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 land we're getting our houses we're getting we're getting our debt reduced we're getting our equipment all those kind of Number one, like we always say, those things are important not because we're trying to be greedy and have all this stuff. Uh, each of those declarations in each of our life means that as you have those things, uh, God wants, just like He wants your soul to prosper, He wants you to prosper in all areas of your life. Not because He wants you to ride around in fancy cars and have all kinds of stuff. And if those things are in your life, that's fine. Uh, they, if they have purposes that glorify God, hallelujah. Uh, but uh, those things are important for us to reach other people. Okay, ministry to, uh, to, to the kingdom costs money and it requires equipment. It requires vehicles. It requires things. So those things are not just to make you feel great about yourself. They're to build the kingdom of God. Okay, so keep that in your mind. Don't ever feel bad about receiving things. Like Kelly and I, we pray this declaration often and things are starting to flow into our life that we didn't even realize. We talk about equipment. Literally, someone walked up to us and donate us thousands of dollars worth of speakers and DJ equipment. We didn't even ask for it. We weren't even asking for that. Next thing we know, we're like, well, what do we do with all this stuff? I don't really need it. That church was kind of small. This church is kind of small at the time. You know, Now we have all our own equipment at the new church. What do I need this for? Well, lo and behold, the Lord wants to take these beautiful Bose speakers out to the beach, uh, and we're going to put on uh, evangelism crusades out on the beach. We're going to we're going to be bumping uh, music out there. We're going to preach in the Word. So uh, and so they're not for to say, hey, look, I got this great sound system at my house, which is way too powerful for my house anyway. Uh, you know, uh, it's to say, hey, God's going to bring equipment into your life for His reasons. You know, and He's going to bring the finances to deal with it, uh, and. There's been supernatural things been pouring into our life that people have been blessing us. I mean, money's been coming. Hey, go take a break. You know, I mean, uh, we, we were blessed by Pastor Steve and Aaron. Just boom, go, go take a break. And we, they didn't have to do that. You know, they don't. They, we didn't ask them for that. God just speaks to people's hearts to provide the things that you need. So increase is good, guys. Okay. Uh, so, um, so who's ready for a life-changing message? It's, a, it's not a long one. It's, a, it's pretty short. Uh, but I cannot wait to unload this on you guys. Uh, God has just uh, been pouring this into my heart. And I believe he gave it to me today because um, <clears throat> I believe it's, it's the right timing. And I believe that you need to hear it. 
people that are in this room need to hear it, and the people that are watching online, uh, people that will watch later on YouTube. But today we're going to talk about how we can know how to have a mind like the mind of God. Okay? Uh, and, you know, everyone always says that they, that they, that they want to know the mind of God. But, uh, but sometimes the, the people will say, I, I want to know God's heart. Right? You ever heard that? Now, in, in the Greek, uh, uh, those are interchangeable terms. Okay? Uh, those are uh, heart and mind are basically the same thing. So if you want to know the heart of God, you're going to know the mind of God. Okay, and uh, though we can't possibly know the depths of God's mind, you know, we can kind of know how he thinks about us and how he thinks towards others. And that's important. Okay, uh, and it starts with uh, some, some pretty uh, important concepts. Okay, so let's do this. So I want to ask you something. What is it like to have a mind like God's? Think about that in your mind. What, what, that, what does that mean to you as, you as you think about that? And I want you to listen to me closely, okay? Uh, did, make sure, did, do I have everyone's attention? Okay? Amen. Your attitude about your future, about your hopes, about your dreams for tomorrow, they determine, the su- they determine your success or they determine your failure, okay? Your attitude determines those things. So I, I want you, well, number one, the Bible, it, it introduces something. It introduces the concept of change your thoughts, you change your life, okay? That's what the Bible does. And we'll go through a couple of scriptures that kind of talks about that. So I want you to say something with me aloud and together. I'll, I'll do this from time to time. Uh, so just repeat after me when I say this, okay? Because this, when we repeat things, they go into our heart. We remember them, okay? Change your thoughts and you change your life. I'll say it. Change your thoughts, and you change your life. Amen? So I want you to turn in your Bible, uh, or you can look up on the screen, and we're going to go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Okay? Okay, and in there it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things, okay? Think on these things, y'all. Okay, so I, in, when, I, when I talk, I give you a little bit of exercise. Uh, everyone who's able, I just for a moment, I just want you to please stand to your feet and bow your head. And let's pray for a moment. Hmm. I just need to stop a second and let God do this. Okay. Hey, Father God, uh, Father God, we just thank you for the joy of being in this house, Lord. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit empower us to understand the mind of God concerning our thoughts, Lord, about ourselves, about our families, about our future, because our thoughts, Lord, are going to determine exactly that. In the authority of Jesus' name, we pray. And all of God's children say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, you guys can be seated. So first of all, I want to say something, okay? This... The Holy Bible, right? It holds you responsible for your thought life. Okay? If we listen to the voice uh, of King Solomon in Proverbs 23, uh, we go to verse 7 of that. It says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink. He says to you, but his heart is not with you. Now what I want you to see in that is that it says, as a man thinketh, so is he. And you're all men, by the way. <laughs> you're mankind. Just some of you are womans, right? Okay. So as a man thinketh, so is he. Hallelujah. So I, I want you to say that aloud uh, and together with me. Repeat after me. As a man thinks, so is he. Thinks, so is he. Okay, I want you to remember that. Download that in your mind. And if you think you can, you will. If you think you can't, you won't. Right? 
If you think you're going to be beaten, you're going to be beaten. If you think you're going to fail, you will. Because your thought life determines the quality of your life. Okay? So I want you to direct your attention to the screen, and let's look at Philippians. Okay? Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. So it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Okay? Amen? So uh, on the next verse... uh, Paul writes in Romans 12, chapter 12, verse 2. This is one that we all know. It's a very common, uh, it's one of those A-lister verses, I call it. It's, it's along up there with John 3, 16 and, you know, all those guys. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that is good and acceptable. Okay? So by the renewing of your mind. So how do you renew your mind? How do you renew your mind? You renew your mind by the washing. I didn't say washing. That's where I'm from. You say washing. So you could understand. Washing of the word of God. Okay? Next verse, please. Uh, Amen. So in the next verse, Ephesians 5.26. And I'm always in the New King James Version. Uh, I like King James, uh, but New King James is a little bit more hipster. So, uh, you know, you guys can relate a little easier. But it says that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. Okay, the washing of water by the word. And that's how we renew our mind, guys. It's the word of God. Man, this thing. It's powerful. If you really get into it, it's like Wes said. He, he's like looking at Blaine to understand what he was reading. But once you grasp what God's trying to tell you, you grab a, a passion for this word. Uh, you can't put it down. Like it's sometimes at work, I can't put this thing down. I'm reading through books recently that I've, as a pastor for 10 years, haven't even touched one in years. And I'm like, I can't, it's riveting. I can't get my mind out of it, you know, because Jeremiah, Lamentations, he's just weeping and crying and whining. But it's so, you know, that's why I used to see Lamentations. You know, it's like such a whiner book. You know, everybody's crying and whining about, oh, Jerusalem. You know, but that's how I looked at it in the past. But God, he speaks powerfully in his word, you know. So uh, read, read a book you've never read before in there. And ask the Lord to reveal something to you, and he will. Uh, you know, and uh, so if you want to turn your life around, start reading the biblical truth about what you should think about how, and about how you should live your life. And I'm going to tell you something. The pity party that's going on in your head right now uh, the mentality that you've uh, that you that has taken over you, it's going to transform into a champion for Christ. Okay, that's what it's done for me. It's turned me into a champion. I don't know, I might don't look like much of a champion at times, but believe me, it's I, I've come a long way. Wes, uh, from what I've uh, I've seen of his life, even in the last year, that man has turned into a champion. I mean, he uh, was a year ago. He's right. He was a completely different person. Uh, I, I would have been, I was a little hesitant talking with him because I felt intimidated by uh, the type of things that kind of mentality he had. It was different. And I was like, no, Lord, the, the Lord was telling me to stick it out. This guy's got, he's got something. And he does. You know, and, and that comes from the washing of the word. Hallelujah. He's, he's washed himself in the word. He's, he's immersed himself and it's completely changed his mentality. So let's look at Isaiah 26.3. Uh, it says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Okay? I want you to see something here. It says, whose mind is stayed on you. It doesn't say those whose mind watches TV three hours a night. Right? They probably didn't know about television back then. But... (laughs) But whatever that cultural context of that time was, they weren't saying, focus your mind on whatever is going to make you happy, okay? Uh, But rather, whose mind is stayed on the principles of righteousness, okay? That's stayed on you. That's Jesus. He's the principles of righteousness, okay? So what you think about, what you brood about, what you're depressed over, 
everything that goes through your brain is something that you decide whether it stays there or not. Okay? And I don't know everything that's going on in each of your lives right now. I don't know every good thing. I don't know every bad thing. And I'm not gonna, certainly not going to belittle what's going on in your life. And what's going on is probably something pretty significant. You know? I'm not sitting up here saying, hey, get over it, which I am in a, in a way, and I probably will say that at some point. <laughs> but I want to say it with love because I'm going through it too. Right now I'm getting all kinds of neurological attacks for, and, and different things that have been going on because of something that hit me lately. You know, I, I, I'm struggling with some of the stuff Denise has had with the peeling skin and stuff. I'm hoping I don't, I'm not getting that thing she had, uh, you know, because, you know, I'm getting the peeling skin and all that stuff. And, you know, I, but I'm just, and I want to tell you where my mind is in the midst of that as I go forward, uh, you know, because it's a little frustrating to me, you know, to, to have my skin peeling off my body. You know, I'm used to keeping myself nice and looking, having a decent image, you know, and to have my, my hands look like they're falling off me, you know, it's, it's a struggle. <laughs> but I don't know what's going on in your life, but I urge you to look at all the blessings you do have, okay? And so, Wes said something that was very important, okay? And I, that's why as soon as he said it, I said, thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the Holy Spirit links us all. We, me and Wes, we didn't get together and plan our messages out or anything like that, okay? Look at your blessings and be grateful, okay? Be grateful for them because it's not happiness that makes you grateful. It's gratefulness that makes you happy. Okay? And that's something the Lord gave me this week to tell you guys. It's gratefulness that makes you happy, not happiness that makes you grateful. Okay? You win the war of the mind when you recognize that your attitude is contagious. Okay? And as a man thinketh, so is he. I want you to look at Paul. Okay, we all know Paul in the Bible, right? Uh, big time apostle, did all kinds, of evangelized most of the world at the time, you know, wrote most of the Old New Testament, you know. But this guy, Paul, okay, so after he had been stoned and beaten, left for dead in the streets of Jerusalem, for what? What was he doing? He was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Preaching the gospel. He tells us to think on the verse we said earlier, he tells us in Philippians 4, 8, to think on all those whatsoevers. Whatsoever is this, whatsoever is that, whatsoever is good and noble. And all. After laying there almost dead in the streets of Jerusalem, that's what he writes. This, this is what he got for preaching about Jesus Christ. How many of you have been beaten half to death? Maybe it's emotionally. Maybe it's spiritually. Maybe it's not physically. You just walk away. This is, it's too much. I'm gone. No, you think on the things that are good. You be grateful for them. Because it also says in the Word of God that you're in good company if you're getting that kind of stuff because Jesus got it too. Paul got it, obviously, but Jesus got beaten for what he was doing as well. Okay, we're in good company. He was persecuted too. Uh, and it doesn't mean we're all going to have to deal with that, but we're probably going to have to deal with it at some point. Uh, the Bible establishes the fact that your success or your failure is a direct result of your thought life. Your attitude is reflected in your speech, okay? From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And that's the Word of God, okay? That's, that's straight out of here. I'm not making it up. That's what Jesus said. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in your heart today? Are you grateful? Are you grateful? Your attitude embraces faith. Or it wallows in doubt. Okay? Believe in the God that believes in you. You are a child of God. You have access to God. Does that mean something to you? You have access to God. You have access to the most supernaturally powerful thing in the universe. In the authority of Jesus' name. And that's an awesome pleasure, guys. That's an awesome privilege in the mind of God. For you to have. Your attitude celebrates in victory or it wallows in self-pity. It's your choice. It really is. I'd rather change my mind. Uh, I'd rather change my mind and succeed at something than uh, to have my own way and fail at something. Okay? Because when it's God's way, it's going to succeed. No matter what it looks like at the time. I want you to think about that. Your attitude refuses to be pushed by your problems or to be led by your dreams. 
That's what a, a soldier of, uh, of the kingdom is. We, we don't let these worldly things decide how we think, okay? Do not let your past control your future. We all have pasts in here. <laughs> Mine's pretty shady, you know. I, I come from a similar background like Wes, not, but not quite. You know, it's just a different version, you know. <laughs> Rebecca, we all know her story, you know. We know, you know, Denise was she's a wild one, but no, just, right. But you get it, you get it, right? Okay. Uh, don't allow people to define your future. Okay. Don't let other people drag up your past. Don't. Don't let them try to destroy your present. You're a child of God, amen. You have the free moral agency to become who you want to become. You can completely recreate yourself. You know, <clears throat> I've known Rebecca in at her lowest, you know, uh, point, and uh, before she got here with the church and everything like that. And I can easily see her being, you know, whatever God wants her to be. But I could see her being someone who's powerfully speaking to women all over the world. She, I, some time ago, she might have been someone who was completely homeless and had nothing. That's okay. If your past doesn't define you. You can have greatness in your future. It doesn't mean you have to speak all over the world. It, it could be just you could just be great in your family or whatever. But you have the ability for greatness in each other. You can't you can't read this Bible and not be joyful. Okay, uh, why? Because the Bible says something. It says rejoice and be exceedingly glad. <laughs> Amen. Rejoice that you have the health to be here today. I was can I tell you I was. Whining and complaining this morning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people were canceling by look. I got a full house. I don't know. People were whining and or, or texting and canceling. I'm like, yeah, oh, great. I'm gonna go talk to two people. You know, uh, you know. And it's like, and she's like, and she's like, stop whining. You know? <laughs> Get over it. Right? God has you there for a reason, and the right people will be there. Amen. And they are. Uh, but rejoice that the angels are going before you. To prepare your way, okay? And they're, they're behind you. You're, they're your rear guard, okay? And that's an actual Bible fact, y'all, okay? The Bible says that he will give his angel charge over you to protect you in all your ways. Okay? That's in the Word. And I know I'm alive today because of the guardianship of God's angels. It has to be. There's not, Some of the situations I've been in, I mean, I literally always put my car under a, a tractor trailer one time, passing out drunk driving. And when I was like real young, I mean, here I am. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I should have been dead. I should have been under that tractor trailer. Okay, uh, I don't even know why I brought that up, but it came up in my mind now. Uh, so God wants you to hear that we all come from a shady past, you know, at times, and and He saved us. He's, I mean, His angels literally just knocked my car out, but they had to have. I mean, I should be under it. You know, uh, I know I'm alive today because of them and Him. It's the if this were the only truth in the Bible, it would make Christianity the greatest relationship on earth, or religion, as people might call it. You know, it would make it the greatest thing available to anyone on earth. Amen. Just that one truth: Guard, angels guarding you. Right now at our work, Kelly and I, we, we see them. We we see them. There's two on each side of my door every day. Wait, there's two on each side of Denise's door. There's two on each side of his, her door, and they're protecting our doorways. Uh, call me crazy, but that's what it is. We have eight, six angels in the building at least protecting three doorways because we've asked them. To. And we see them every day. I see them every day. I'm like, hey, guys, I give them a high five, you know, whatever. But, yeah, but rejoice that God's your father because you're somebody, okay? You're a child of God. You have access to God. Get happy about who you are. It'll change your mind. You, uh, your attitude determines your success or your failure. I can't say that enough. The Bible-based attitude does not depend on your circumstances. Okay? The Bible-based attitude is a rock-ribbed confidence that endures no matter what the circumstances of life are. Hallelujah. So every person in this place, I just... Uh, um, I want to say something, okay? Everybody listening all across America, around the world, whoever sees these recordings... Uh, I want to say something to you today. Rejoice! <laughs> okay? That's it. Okay, so I want to share with you a man uh, briefly who had a heartbreaking situation. Okay? 
I want you to look how he responded. I told Kelly this morning, I said, it's a 20-minute message. She's like, no, it'll be 35. <laughs> and she said, she, I was like, no, it's 20 minutes, I swear. It got a little longer on me, sorry. But, uh, so, but uh, <clears throat> it's Job, okay? He's the richest man in the Bible, right, at the time. He's the richest man in the East, so says the Bible at that time. Uh, he was a powerful, he was a righteous man, okay? And he made a daily sacrifice for each of his 10 children, it says, right? I want you to think about that. At the end of seven days, he killed 70 animals. Can you imagine slaughtering 70 animals a week <laughs> and making sacrifices for your children? Because at the time, that's what they did. They sacrificed animals for their children, you know, for their families and stuff to say, hey, Lord, forgive us of our sins. That's all they had at the time, right? Uh, you know, they didn't have Jesus at the time. So praying for the well-being of his children, Job experienced the greatest tragedy, tragedy in all the Old Testament. Okay? He lost 10 children in one day. Okay? In one day, he lost everything he owned. In one day, he lost uh, all of his wealth. And he was a man of awesome wealth, y'all. Okay? All of his herds were destroyed in one day. The emotional agony, I think, that is involved with that is beyond your wildest comprehension. I don't think any of you can understand that. I know I can't. Maybe Wes can. <laughs> you know? So one day, literally, okay, everything's gone. I mean, I, I. But what was his response? His attitude toward God. Job did not blame God. He said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you imagine? He was grateful towards God. And guess what? God gave Job 10 more children, restored his wealth while he was yet alive be greater than it was ever before. And then you're like, well, what about his other kids? I mean, okay, that's great. He gave him more kids. But guess what? Because the God that gave the first is the God who can give the last, okay? Remember this. Everything wasn't perfect in Job's lifetime because of this. Job was a righteous man. And when he got to heaven, the 10 children that he lost were waiting there for him. Today in heaven, there's 20 children around his table. <laughs> the 10 he got, the 10 he lost, God restored the whole family. And now they're around the throne of God. Just like it's going to be with your families. Anybody you've lost in your family, you're, you're, it's going to be restored. Okay? As long as you, you're in the kingdom of God. You've got to stay in, in the, Lord's, the Lord's kingdom. Okay? But remember, the secret, whenever the worst happens, don't blame God. Don't become angry. Okay? Don't become bitter. And you might say, if, that, if that's the way God does it, I'm done with that. You know? You know take my ten kids, I'm done with them. Don't ever do that. Because God can replace anything that you ever lose. Because God didn't take those children. He didn't kill those children. Okay? Okay? If you... And truth to be told, maybe if Job had taken his authority over the enemy, because the enemy took those children. The devil, it says right there, he, the devil had him killed. Did God allow it? Absolutely, because he gave us authority to step up to the enemy. He doesn't have to go around the whole world doing everything, because then we'd have a perfect world, wouldn't we? You know, he handed the earth over to us and said, take dominion. So we need to take authority over the enemy in our life, okay? So what happens to good people when bad things happen to them? They become better people, okay? With the help and grace of God. You are a child of God. You are royalty. Nothing is impossible for you. When you change your thoughts, you'll change the world, guys, okay? So I want you to say that aloud and together with me, okay? And repeat it after me. Change your thoughts, change your thoughts. and you change your world. Change your world. Hallelujah. Keep that in your mind. Give the Lord praise in the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so as we come down the home stretch here, guys, your attitude determines your attainments. Okay? Your attitude determines your attainments. And I want you to consider that Apostle Paul again, but also the. You guys ever heard of Doubting Thomas? He was a disciple, disciple of Jesus. Now, the Apostle of Paul, after he was uh, beaten and he was stoned, Okay, we talked about that. His response was he sang songs in a Roman prison. Okay, and, and, and God sent angels down to shake that prison off its foundations. And Paul and Silas, 
they walked out of that prison with two things in hand. Okay? They walked out with the jailhouse keys in one hand, hallelujah, and they walked with a, out with a convert in the other hand, the garden. Okay? Uh, and so even in the worst of circumstances, they gave the Lord praise. And you know what? Elvis Presley didn't write jailhouse rock. Okay? <laughs> Paul and Silas did. Amen. Yeah, they rocked that place. Okay? You got it? Consider doubting Thomas. He had Jesus for a pastor. You can't get any better. Right? Doubting Thomas. Jesus pastor. Doesn't... Thomas was never beaten. He was never put in prison. Uh, he never stoned for his witness of Jesus. He saw miracles for three and a half years. He was a couch potato Christian if there was ever something like that. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So following the crucifixion, he says, I can't believe that Jesus is alive. Sorry, guys. I can't believe it. Unless I touch his body. That's what you call stinking thinking. Okay, And we all go through it at some point. We're all guilty of it, okay? Stop it. <laughs> we can believe it. You got hurt back in 1985, okay? You got back hurting. Well, maybe you weren't born yet. I don't know. But... 86. <laughs> you got hurt back hurt in 85. You got hurt in 2005. You got hurt in 2020. COVID just destroyed your life, okay? And COVID wasn't a... It was, it was a bad thing. It took lives. So don't, I'm not making light of it, okay? I hear you. I do. I've been hurt many times, guys, over and over. We all have. We need to get up and get over it. That's where I said I'm going to say it, okay? In love, get over it. Get up and get over it. Stop saying I can't and start saying I can do all things through Christ. Amen? Because by God's grace, nothing is impossible to those that believe and are called to what? According to the purposes of God. Amen? Don't say I don't know the right people. You know God the Father. You know God the Son. You know God the Holy Spirit. You know three great people. Okay? And that's enough to turn the world upside down, y'all. Okay? It was promised in the New Testament by Jesus himself that you shall receive power. Okay? Jesus said it, not me. Okay? And after that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You guys have God inside of you. Okay? You have power over the world. You have power over the flesh. You have power over the devil. You're in control of the devil. You have authority over him. Okay? Power over powers. You have power over principalities in the heavens. Power over sickness. Power over disease. Power over poverty. It's the Lord that gives you the power to get these things. It's the Lord who gives you the power to get wealth. Don't forget that. But you have the power for it. Okay? You are connected to enough supernatural power to terrify the demons in hell. Right here. Okay? You have all that power. So I say today, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Praise God. The people who know God take action. Okay? The people who know God, don't, they, they don't just sit around. They, they, they don't whine about how bad things are. I did this morning. Forgive me, Lord. <laughs> we repent when we do these things, okay? That's what it says, okay? You go through the problem. You, you, you don't sit there and let the problem whip you. Quitting is not a solution, okay? Look around you. Analyze the conversations of the people that you know who lead unhappy, unfulfilled, unsuccessful lives, okay? They're constantly whining about their circumstances, okay? Their family, their boss, their church, their marriage. It's always something. Okay? And if this is you guys, this is my call to you to please stop. <laughs> I'm saying it nicely. <laughs> please stop. Okay? PD, stop it. Okay, I will. I'm sorry. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it, y'all. Paul said, forgetting those things which are past. And I, I want to tell you the most therapeutic phrase that you'll ever find in theology. Okay? You ready? It's pretty simple. Get over it. <laughs> Get over it. Yeah, you, the, you thought theology was supposed to be complicated and hard. Well, it's pretty simple. Quit wallowing around in the misery of your past. Okay? Have you been hurt? Have you been criticized? Have you been rejected? Have you failed? Absolutely. We all have. Okay? Get over it. There was a president, Calvin Coolidge, he once said, uh, nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Okay, that's pretty good. Those are wise words. Talent's not going to do it. 
Because there's nothing in the world more common than unsuccessful people with talent. There's tons of talent and lots of unsuccess. Okay? Genius isn't going to do it. The world's full of educated, dere uh, educated derelicts and paupers. Okay? There's plenty of doctors out there that are homeless. Okay? Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. Persistence and determination will get you everything based in the Word of God. Amen? You get nowhere until you start pushing. The righteous arise. Okay? The Bible says that. And the Bible says that they take action. Okay? You have the ability to do anything that God has placed in your heart to do. It. He's telling you to do it and you can do it. Do it. I don't care if you're dead broke right now. If God says you can do it, you can do it. Okay? Get up and do it because God's going to go with you and he's going to make it happen. The attitude of fortitude, okay, you know what fortitude is, right? Strength, persistence, right? The attitude of fortitude turns adversity into advantage, okay? If what you're doing doesn't have resistance, then it's not worth doing, y'all. If something's not coming against you, find something else to do because you're not doing it right. You need resistance in your life to know you're doing something right, okay? Without the resistance of water, a ship can't float. Okay? Without the resistance of air, a plane can't fly. Right? Without the resistance of gravity, you can't walk out of this building today. Okay? Have you, you know, if you've run into a mountain of impossibility, I just want you to encourage you, climb over it. Okay? If you can't get over it, go around it. If you can't go around it, just explode it and go through it. Just punch your way through if you got to. Okay? Turn, if you can't go through it, then I turn it into a mountain and turn that mountain into a gold mine and sell it to someone and do bigger stuff for the Lord, okay? Use your mind. Make something creative. Make some money off it and get out. Whatever. Quitting is not an option. Adversity is opportunity to, uh, to those who possess the attitude of fortitude, okay? Adversity, I'm going to say it again, is opportunity. Adversity coming against you is an opportunity that's given to those who possess the attitude of fortitude. If you possess that and you are doing something great, you're going to get resistance. You're going to get hate. You're going to have haters. I got tons of them. I got tons of people that love me too. I just hold on to the gratefulness for those who love me and the ones that want to talk all kinds of stuff on me. They don't like what I'm preaching. They don't like what I'm teaching. They don't like what I'm saying or doing. I'm doing what I'm doing for God. God will take care of me. Okay? Uh, Joseph, uh, this is kind of one of my last examples here, guys. I'll, I won't hold you longer. But I want to say this, though. A rubber band is effective only when it's stretched. Right? Okay? A turtle doesn't get anywhere until he sticks his, ne his neck out. All right? Okay? God uses no one until you graduate from the university of adversity. You like these little cliches, guys? You like that? So, okay. So, think, and think about Joseph, though. You all know Joseph, the man with the many colored coat. Oh, you hear the little songs about that growing up in Sunday school. That was a, quite a story for him. I won't go into all the details. But Joseph came to the throne of Egypt, okay, through the pit that his brothers threw him in. Egypt, guys. They sold, his brothers, they sold him as a slave to the Midianites, right? As a teenager, beat him up, threw him in a pit, and then sold him to, as a slave. And this guy was like basically part of a very wealthy family at the time. You know, I mean, he was supposed to be like a prince almost. He was sold again to Potiphar, who was the chief of police in Egypt, okay? And they wrote that he was falsely accused by a desperate housewife for raping her, okay? The wife of Potiphar. He was sent to prison innocently, where he spent 12 years of his life. Okay? Adversity turned that fuzzy-faced boy into a statesman of steel that was able to give a nation the wheelbase as second in command of the mightiest nation on earth, Egypt. Okay? A Jew, second in command of Egypt. And the potential to birth the Jewish people for 340 years when they became the nation that they became. Why? Because he had grit. That's why. 
He had the fortitude to endure the wind of adversity. Moses was raised as a prince in Egypt with wealth, power. But God did what? He banished him to the backside of a wilderness for 40 years to be a sheep herder until he learned to hear his voice. Sort of like what happened with Wes. He took all that wealth from him. Not because he hated Wes or wanted to hurt him. Wes didn't know how to use it at the time. He was using it for bad things. Just like Moses. He murdered someone. He, he, you know, God didn't want, even if there was an Egyptian that was hurting a Jew, he didn't want him to murder that person. God loves every person. Us murdering people. <sighs> now there's a difference between killing and murder. We won't get into all that. But... Uh, in this case, he, that was a crime of murder. It was a crime of hate. That's why Moses did it. Okay? So God got, you know, just like Wes needed some time to hear God's voice before he could release that wealth back into his life, which he's doing and he's going to do in great ways. Uh, he, he, Moses needed some time uh, to, to, to learn how to, the discipline of doing what needed to be done. Amen? And, when, uh, and then he went and he faced, he faced Pharaoh and he liberated the Jewish people, didn't he? Uh, after uh, all hundreds of years of, of slavery. And the last one is that Abraham Lincoln became America's, um, in many eyes, I don't necessarily want to get into the politics of it all, but many feel he's the greatest president that ever lived. Okay, And he was a great president for his time. He, he helped abolish slavery and all kinds of things. You know, uh, He was defeated 12 times before he became president. Okay? It was 13th time, 12 disciples in Jesus, perfect, one of the perfect numbers of God, right? 13th time he ran, he became the president of the United States. And that's, a, that's an attitude of fortitude, y'all. 12 times he got defeated. It costs a lot to run as president, the campaign. You know, John Bunyan, he wrote uh, Pilgrim's Progress uh, in the Bedford Jail. And other than the Bible... Pilgrim's Progress is the most read book in the history of Christianity. I have six copies in my bookstore inventory if you all want one. Just hit me up. Uh, with the attitude of fortitude, you can never forget who you are. Okay, You can never forget your dream. You'll never give up on the mission because with your goal, God's goal, you'll get there. Just keep going. Okay? The victory is ours through Christ. The Lord says that with me, the victory is ours through Christ. Um, can we stand to our feet together, guys? So, how many of you in this room can say, Pastor, there are painful thoughts and memories in my past, okay? That, that destroy my peace, destroy my happiness of the present, okay? I want peace of mind in my life, Pastor. Okay? And I need God's help to have that peace of mind. That's any of you. That describes you. Uh, with all heads bowed, all eyes closed, nobody's looking, just lift your hand right now, right where you are. Everyone uh, in this audience, those of you who are watching online right now, I just want you to lift your hands towards the Lord and pray this prayer with me. Just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the authority of Jesus' name, I receive the peace of God. The past is all understanding. And I pray that you would give me supernatural power. Lord Jesus, that that supernatural power would pour into my life and give me peace in all situations. And would lift me above my circumstances. And free me of the shackles that are on my life. We break those chains right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can we give the Lord a shout in the name of, in, in, in the house? You know, shout of praise in the house. Come on, Lord Jesus. Guys, do you, do you have a promised land that you're trying to reach? Yes. God has your provision ready. Diligently seek Him and obey Him and receive all that He has for you. And now, church, receive your blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. 
And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, giving you his peace. May you come to the point that you're willing to accomplish what God has designed specifically for you. May you begin to be led by the Holy Spirit, growing into a new dimension of great faith that you've never known before. May the Holy Spirit empower you to resolve your problem, to get you through your problem, to receive the provision of God. May you understand that it takes great faith, obedience, and praise to receive the promises of God. Hallelujah. May you never be the same again after today as you live your life in obedience and praise to the almighty God. Receive this blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, uh, Kelly, let's remind everything of something very important. Okay? We love you. And God loves you. And Jesus is Lord. Now take your place. To your world. Bye-bye.